In a single day, terrorist attacks in France, Tunisia, and Kuwait have left a horrific scar across three continents. The White House has published a statement in response to the attacks, adding that, quote, the United States condemns in the strongest terms the terrorist attacks in France, Kuwait, and Tunisia today. Our thoughts and prayers are with the victims of those heinous attacks, their loved ones, and the people of all three countries. As the president has discussed with his French, Kuwaiti, and Tunisian counterparts in recent weeks, we are resolute and united in our shared effort to fight the scorch of terrorism. The attacks once again highlight a debate over, uh, over where the roots of radicalization lie and raise questions and concerns over the spread of violent religious extremism. To help us gain a little more insight into these senseless attacks and what implications they might have, I was joined earlier by Middle East analyst Dr. Nazir al Amari and Ibrahim Hooper of the Council on American Islamic Relations. I first asked Dr. Nazir al Amari if he thought this was a coordinated effort by ISIS in all three countries. I don't believe so. I believe these groups operate independently. They are loosely united uh, by, a, by a deadly ideology, uh, unfortunately, an ideology that is driven by the distrust, uh, fear, uh, uh, all kinds of grievances. Um, uh, so I don't believe that this has been a coordinated attack, although they, as I said, uh, the ideology is uniting more and more of these terrorists. Right now, I want to move on to, uh, to you, Ibrahim. So we're, we're hearing, you know, there is no direct evidence yeah. that, that these are coordinated attacks. But, but there, it, it is worth noting that each one of these countries does have yeah. very close ties to the United States. In fact, that factory uh, that was targeted in France was a U.S. run, yeah. run factory. These attacks happen within three hours of each other. Uh, is this just coincidence? Well, I mean, of first of all, we have to say that we join with the, the American Muslim community, joins with the world community in condemning these things. These are horrific, cowardly, appalling. There's absolutely no justification for them based on any ideology, however extreme or, or monstrous. Uh, whether they're coordinated, I think it's too soon to tell, but it's, it is very coincidental that they would all occur at the same time, one claimed by ISIS and the others in the style of ISIS. And after a call for, by ISIS for uh, the so-called lone wolves or whatever to take it upon themselves to do these kinds of acts during Ramadan. So I, I could see a case being made that there is some even uh, loose coordination on this kind of thing. But, you know, I, I, it's hard to understand what the reasoning is behind these kinds of things because as the world sees these kinds of terrorist acts, it repudiates any kind of ideology that would be behind them. And whatever twisted viewpoint, the world's going to reject it. So, you know, what's the point of these kinds of things? Yeah, and you bring up the, the added element that we're halfway through Ramadan, which I do want to ask you about. But, uh, Dr. Alamari, I wanted to talk about Kuwait in particular because that is one of the where one of the attacks took place where ISIS did take responsibility for attack. Uh, we don't usually associate um, Kuwait with war on terror. We don't associate Kuwait with, um, with, with these sorts of terror attacks. Uh, do you see this as an instance where, where, do you see this as a sign that ISIS is in fact succeeding in, their, in, in spreading violence outside of Iraq and Syria where the majority of the fighting uh, has been taking place? I, I think that ISIS has made it clear that they, uh, that they are going to target uh, Shiites uh, in Saudi Arabia. They made it clear that uh, their, their mission is to uh, spread uh, terrorism across the region and the world. So, uh, but re uh, as you said, Kuwait is, uh, is a stable country. Uh, it doesn't have uh, a history of, of uh, terrorism. But uh, this definitely has come as, uh, as an awakening to, to the Kuwaiti government, which did not expect this to, uh, you know, to, to come to, it, to, to, uh, to Kuwait City. So I believe that uh, ISIS right now is operating on the assumption that if you target Shiites, you will have some kind of support in the Middle East, given the situation in Syria and Iraq. So I believe that they're playing on the public sentiment to drum up support for their, their t uh, deadly, deadly cause. Yeah, and Dr. Alamari, just, just to follow up, because this, this conversation does get very, very complicated when we start talking about who's targeting who. In the instance of, of Kuwait, there are those in the intelligence community that believe that this was, um, th that, that the motivation here was to incite violence between Shias and Sunnis. Who is targeting who uh, at, at this point when, we, when we're looking at these attacks? 
Well, I believe ISIS is trying, uh, is playing the, uh, you know, the anti-Shiism uh, card. They want more Sunnis to join their fight. Uh, they are using this, uh, you know, they are using what's happening in Syria. Uh, uh, you know, the Assad regime has been uh, killing people. So in retaliation, they are saying uh, this is uh, a Shia versus Sunni fight. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, it has worked because they are uh, recruiting uh, more people and they're recruiting uh, people in the West. So whatever they, are, they, they have been doing, it's working because their ranks have been uh, filling and their numbers uh, have been increasing. Uh, so I believe that they have played this, uh, especially in a place like Saudi Arabia or Kuwait, where there is a level of uh, uh, sympathy uh, w with that uh, anti-Shiism sentiment that they are playing. Yeah, and Ibrahim, I wanted uh, to move back to something that you had said earlier, you know, making mention that we're halfway basically through the holy month of Ramadan. You would think that things would be a little bit more peaceful. At the very least, we'd see a reduction in fighting. Why is that not the case? Well, obviously, uh, ISIS doesn't follow Islamic principles. We can see that every time they massacre civilians or torture people or, or, or execute people. Their stock and trade is fear and hatred. And I think it's incumbent upon all of us not to succumb to this fear and hatred. They're trying to sow sectarian uh, uh, discord in Kuwait and other places. Don't allow it to happen. That's the response to ISIS. Right. And uh, we're, we're almost out of time, but I did want to uh, get each one of you to comment on this. Any time that we're having this conversation, there's always the debate over the roots of radicalization. There's blame on the United States uh, over the invasion of Iraq leading to the creation of ISIS. There's blame on the Assad regime in Syria. There's blame on the Saudi government. But what should the appropriate response be at this point to ISIS continuing uh, to spread through the region? Dr. Alamari. I believe that local governments uh, have to work very, have to coordinate more closely to defeat ISIS uh, in Iraq. We haven't seen any of that, or you know, a serious attempt uh, to curtail the you know the ISIS activity. Uh, I believe that uh, the United States should coordinate more more closely with these governments, which uh, may find themselves uh, uh, weak in the face of this wave of terrorism. So I believe there's a lot of work to be done in terms of uh, helping refugees, not you know making sure that these refugee camps uh, don't turn into uh, places where, where, where people are radicalized. So there is a lot of funding needed and there is a lot of coordination uh, needed to defeat ISIS. Uh, Ibrahim, any response? Uh, yeah, the continuation of the brutal Assad regime in Syria fuels ISIS, and the continuation of sectarianism in Iraq fuels ISIS. So you have to deal with those two issues. I want to thank both of you uh, for joining us. That was Middle East analyst Dr. Nazir al and Ibrahim Hooper of the Council on Islam American Islamic Relations here in Washington. Thank you to both thank of you. Thank you.